Okay, so this is the last time I'm going to go over, not the last time, but the the last way I'm going to go over these two cycles together is by looking at what's happening to hormones over time. And then just like creating a, a list of like events. So I've done this a couple different ways for uh, different students in office hours, but essentially maybe you want to do ovarian up here. And no, let, let me, let me, let me do this just in one easy way. So let's do what's happening in the ovarian cycle. What's happening in the uterine cycle. Okay. Then down here, what you can essentially say is like from day one to day seven, B I call BS on like four, three or four day period. This is menstruation. We're going to kind of go backwards. That's what's happening in the uterine uterus. Okay. What's happening in the ovary here is going to be the follicular phase. The follicular phase lasts all the way until day 14 when you have ovulation. Then basically from day seven to day 14 in the uterine stage, this is the proliferative phase. Then from day 14 to day 28 or so in the uterus, this becomes the secretory phase. And then this is the luteal phase. For the ovary. Okay, so if you chunk this out, maybe it's not going to be too bad. Let's maybe color code. I'm going to change this a little bit. I should have color coded that down there, but sorry, I didn't do that. Uh, two vastly different colors. Let's do ovary in blue, and then we'll do uterus in red. Yes, the red was on purpose. Okay. And up here, I'm going to basically go through like what's happening to the hormones and like what's happening in the cycle. So in the follicular phase here, what we're going to see is we're going to start to see an increase in FSH and LH. You see that? You see FSH increasing, LH increasing a little bit right here. We're going to have follicle development. That's essentially what's happening during the, the menstrual phase. You're going through menstruation, but you're already going to start to develop the egg because the the egg takes two weeks to develop, roughly. Okay, so during the, the uh, stage of the uterus, this is menstruation. And you're going to menstruate because you have a decrease in progesterone and estrogen. Right, you see this green line and this kind of maroon line, those lines are very low. That's progesterone and estrogen being very low. Okay. So then in the proliferative phase here and the follicular phase, what we're going to see next is we're going to start to increase estrogen. And we increase estrogen because we have one dominant follicle. How about, you know what? Let me write that. Increase estrogen because dominant follicle. All right. You should see how FSH and LH are going to start to increase. So we increase FSH and LH as a result of that increasing estrogen. As a result of that increasing estrogen, you're going to start to thicken the endometrial lining. Uh, let's write it down here. It? Right? You see how this line for estrogen increases? So that estrogen, estrogen targets the endometrial lining, causing it to thicken. We see a little bit more LH and a little bit more FSH because estrogens are going to be high. At ovulation, we are going to see 
a surge in FSH, LA, and estrogen. Really the most important thing to remember here is we have a surge in LH, which causes ovulation. Sorry, that's ovulation. And you create the corpus luteum. Okay, what's happening in the uterus at this time? You're, you're still going to thicken the endometrial lining. It's still thickening. There's no difference. But you should see, you see that peak right there, that LH peak is going to cause ovulation to occur. Now we're going to be in the luteal phase. Okay, so it's going to be easy because the luteal phase is just all this. So what you're going to see is progesterone and estrogen increasing. So we see an increase in progesterone and estrogen. Let me move my picture a little bit here. You should see a decrease in FSH and LH, right? Because progesterone is high, and so is estrogen, and that feeds back negatively to turn these two uh, hormones off and decrease them. So what's happening in the ovary is equals no follicle development. The most important thing is you target the endometrium and we thicken and maintain endometrium. Okay, that's what's going to happen at that time. Sorry, I was just gonna move this a little bit like, yeah, maybe right there, okay. Okay, so right here, what is going to happen is if there's no fertilization, the corpus albicons, I shouldn't do this in red, should do this in blue. Sorry about that. We're going to color code everything. So basically, if there's no fertilization, what ends up happening is we have a decrease in progesterone and estrogen, okay? We start increasing FSH and LH and follicle development. Because progesterone and estrogen decreased, we're going to start menstruation. Now, if you do have fertilization occur, you're going to have another hormone. And that progesterone will remain high and estrogen will also remain high right there. The other hormone is going to be human chorionic gonadotropin, which I'm going to make in purple. So human, gonad human chorionic gonadotropin should basically be zero all the time, except for when you start to have, once you have the embryo, okay? So once you have the embryo, you're gonna see human chorionic gonadotropin increases, and that's gonna maintain progesterone and estrogen. Let's put at implantation. Okay. That's going to help make sure that we have progesterone and estrogen. We're going to say keeps, okay? Keeps progesterone and estrogen high so that we maintain the endometrium. I'm just gonna abbreviate there too. So I hope that like putting it on the graph maybe helps a little bit. I know it's like, wait, she just wrote FSH is high and LH is high and it says that right there. Sure, 
But sometimes it's very helpful for you guys to write it out like that so you know what's going on on the graph and you understand what's happening as a result. Follicles are developing. You're going from primordial to primary to secondary to graphene follicles during this time. In this, in this menstruation, you basically probably go up to like, I don't know, maybe primary or secondary. And then the proliferative phase, you're still creating some of those, excuse me, follicles. Okay. A lot of times understanding this stuff is you have to figure out the best way that you see it. If you're a visual person and the graph helps you, if you're more of a draw out to understand concepts person, draw on a chart to, to understand concepts, reading it over and rewriting it, you have to find the best way for you, okay? So I hope at least one of these helped you understand female reproductive cycle a little bit better.